Today I'm going to be teaching you all of my tips and tricks for studying chemistry, aka one of the subjects notorious for being difficult. It was definitely a toss up between this, maths and history over what I saw most people crying about, but if you've clicked on this video hopefully I can provide some help in tackling it. I got an A star at A level chemistry and a 9 at GCSE and here is my ultimate guide for studying A level and GCSE chemistry. If you're interested in finding out about more subjects this is the first part in a series of study guides. I got A stars in all the GCSEs and A levels that I took. I'll cover the popular subjects like history, maths, English, the other sciences, so make sure to subscribe down below if you want to see them. Before we dive into the content, I want to address the fact that this is both an A-level and GCSE subject guide. I don't want you to be sat there thinking, but is this entirely relevant for me? Are things going to be more aimed towards A-levels and other things more aimed towards GCSEs? But don't worry. The difference that I found between A-level and GCSE chemistry is that A-level there is more content and it's harder, but the fundamental way to learn the subject and revise it never really changed. I just spent less time on it at GCSEs because I had more subjects, which means my advice for getting an A-star at A-level is the same advice that I'd give for getting a 9 at GCSE. Before we get on to revision techniques, let's start with how you should approach studying the subject all year round. Staying on top of your work is really important. If you get behind, it can really take a mental toll, but you can start feeling quite stressed and overwhelmed with how much you have to do to catch up. And you'll also have less time to give to the content you're currently studying, so you'll also be sacrificing its quality. It's just not a great position to be in, but if you are in this position, here is what I would do. Write a big list of everything that you need to get done, but make sure that everything on this list is broken down into very small tasks, things that would take you 30 minutes to an hour max to complete. You can then start spreading these tasks out throughout the coming week, on top of the work that you already have to do, you'll be able to get everything done in a much more manageable way. Or if you're in year 10 or year 12, use that summer to make sure you're completely up to date with everything before you go into year 11 or year 13. Take every end of topic test seriously. This was definitely the thing that made sure I stayed on top of my work throughout the year. And what I mean by this is properly revise for every single end of topic test as if it's the real thing. Like pretend that your grades are based on this because properly revise is something you would have had to have made all of your revision materials. And it's also great because it takes much less time to recommit something to memory than it does to learn it for the first time, which means you'll be in a better position for learning stuff when it comes to the actual exams you'll find you'll be able to do it so much more quickly throughout the year make sure you understand what has been taught a good teacher can really make or break how confident you feel in chemistry the concepts are hard enough and if it's not explained to you in a way that you understand that's tough obviously there's not too much you can do about teachers if you get a bad one but luckily this is where the internet comes in it has a lot of free teachers out there i relied on youtube so much to make sure i understood the topic i would always watch freesciencelessons.com's videos on youtube but if you just type into the search bar a level redox reaction or whatever topic it is that you're confused about videos will come up just keep searching watching videos until you find someone who explains the topic in a way that you can understand. Finally, utilize your teachers. If you are struggling with a certain question or a topic, go and find your teachers before school or at lunch and ask for some help. Most of my teachers had a genuine passion and wanted to see their students do well, so they were always happy to give up some of their time. Having that one-to-one -one support, being able to ask questions as you go along and not being worried if something sounds stupid because you're not in front of a class, it's so valuable. You've had your lessons, now you need to revise to do well in the exams. These are the revision techniques I found worked best for chemistry. And as a side note, I would make multiple revision resources for every single topic. It has always stuck with me when my teacher told me that he didn't count something as a revision session unless you had physically made something by the end of it. And I think it's because having to think about what you're going to write, how you're going to format and display it, then writing it down, you're really processing that material, thinking about it a couple of times in each revision session. And that helps with memorization. It's much better than creating one set of notes when you learn the topic and then thinking that's enough and just reading that passively over and over until you get to the exams and calling that your revision. Which means for each topic, I would have done everything that I'm about to talk about. Let's start with the most effective way to make your big overall notes for the subject. You're going to want to create something that I call a spec point guide because they can't ask you anything that isn't on the spec so you will literally be able to answer every single question that comes up in that exam using these notes let's go through how to make it copy out your specification and use it as the base for your notes highlight all the key definitions this way they'll match your mark scheme where it says students will be expected to explain x or to calculate y it then doesn't actually tell you how to do this so go back through your class notes textbooks and find where you learned about how to do that then write underneath the spec point how you would go about doing this in the exam i would literally draw lines from that spec point and write what the detail was they'll only ask you things from the specs now you have a complete guide to answering the whole paper from this spec point guide you're then going to create another set of notes i call them summary pages the spec point guides can still feel like a lot of content so it's really important that you have an effective way to condense the course down to act as a refresher of the topic that you can really quickly go over before the exam this is where summary pages come in you're going to create one single a4 page of notes per topic and when i'm talking about topics i'm not talking about the big overall topics like organic chemistry i'm talking about little subtopics so you'll have a page of notes on the alkanes a page of notes on the alkenes the most important rule about creating this page of notes is you you have to force yourself to find a way to break down all of that material to fit onto that one sheet of A4 paper. Flashcards are also a great revision resource. I made my flashcards of the free science lesson videos to learn the content. I found this was really useful for memorization as you were almost processing it twice. You were basically having a mini lesson where you
you'd hear him explain the topic and then you were writing it down. I would make a flashcard per video. I also used them to remember common questions that I would get wrong. Anytime I did a practice question and I got something wrong or I missed some marks off of the question, I would turn it into a flashcard. I would put the question on one side and the answer on the other and I'd break the answer down so I could clearly see what you had to say to get each of the marks. Reaction diagrams. Now this is actually A-level specific because I don't remember in GCSEs you having to know lots of different chain reactions correct me if I'm wrong, but for A-levels at least, I made a huge sheet of paper. And when I'm talking about huge, I mean, I stuck so many different sheets of A4 paper together and I put every single reaction you needed to know for the entire course on it. Now this takes some planning and working out how you're gonna lay it out. But for example, I start with a bubble on the alkenes and then I draw an arrow out to a bubble on alcohol and I'd put above that arrow exactly what you'd need for that reaction, conditions, I'd include a drawing of the functional groups, so I knew exactly what I'd need to draw in an exam. For things like ligand substitution, I'd include what the colour precipitate of the end product is, just all the details so I can recognise any reaction that comes up in the exam, and also draw any reactions that they ask me for, know what something will turn into, what it requires to work, and anything visual you may see. It's really great as well because often in exams they'll test you on multiple reactions in a chain, so you have this visual you can look back on and think, well, how did this link on my little diagram? The last revision technique you should use after making all of these other revision techniques is past papers. I did so many practice questions and past papers before my actual exam, but I cannot stress enough how ridiculously useful they are because you start to see that similar questions come up all the time. There's there's only so many ways they can ask you why something has a higher boiling point. When I was sitting my actual exam, I have found that I had pretty much done the whole of the paper before. Obviously the wording may be slightly different, but the general questions were the same. The curve four and where you're probably going to stand out and get that grade nine is when they're asking you to apply knowledge you should have to a new situation. But if you've done lots of past papers, you get really good at exam technique and guessing what the mark scheme will probably be looking for. I did all the official past papers on my exam board's website, although I was actually the first year to sit the new 91 GCSE exams, which means there weren't actually any official past papers but that won't be the case for you there'll be lots out there available and then there are loads of free tests on physicsandmathstutor.com and what is great about this website is they collect all of the different exam questions and put them into their topics so you can do a test on just the properties of transition metals this is great for revising end of topic tests because you're not scrolling through past papers trying to look for questions that are relevant that's about everything i learned from my time studying a level in gcse chemistry i hope these tips help you if they do please give this video a like any questions you have comment below and i'll answer them and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the other study guides